Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Kennedy and I'm a naturopath in Sydney, Australia and I specialise in methylation and histamine intolerance. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the 13 major causes of histamine intolerance that I discuss in my book. So number one is an imbalance of good bacteria compared to bad bacteria in the gut. And this is called dysbiosis. So this can be from a yeast overgrowth, a candida overgrowth, having bad bacteria in the large intestine as well as SIBO. So when dysbiosis occurs, you will have inflammation. And when you have inflammation, histamine is going to be released from the cells of the gut. Okay, and at the same time, when there's inflammation, your ability to synthesize and secrete the Dow enzyme that breaks down histamine in the gut is also reduced. So the net result is more histamine. Number two is Helicobacter pylori, which is a gram-negative bacteria that causes gastritis and peptic ulcer. Gram-negative bacteria will release LPS toxins that cause inflammation in the stomach, which will release histamine. And at the same time, chronic gastritis, which is inflammatory, will also release histamine, as well as peptic ulcer will cause mucosal damage, which will also increase histamine. Number three, digestive enzyme insufficiency. So having digestive enzyme insufficiency, whether it's low hydrochloric acid, bile acids, pancreatic enzymes, can lead to a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. Now in SIBO, there is a lot of inflammation and when there is inflammation, you will have histamine release. And at the same time, the Dow enzyme that breaks down histamine it's highly concentrated in the small intestine. And when there's inflammation, you'll have difficulty making and excreting adequate down. So the net result is more histamine. At the same time, SIBO reduces the absorption of important nutrients, including folate and vitamin B12 that you need for methylation. And methylation is another way that you can break down histamine. So the net result of digestive enzyme insufficiency is histamine intolerance. Number four, gluten intolerance. So gluten can cause a leaky gut. And when that happens, toxins, undigested food and pathogens can get into the bloodstream and the body will mount a histamine response. Those with celiac disease can have blunted microvilli, which are the tiny little hairs in the gut that actually secrete the Dow enzyme that breaks down histamine. You can also have a wheat allergy, allergy separate to gluten intolerance, and those susceptible will actually have a mast cell release of histamine when triggered from a wheat exposure. Number five, mast cell activation syndrome. So the activation of mast cells to release histamine is a normal part of the immune response. But those with mast cell activation syndrome have a hyperactive or an immune system that is unable to switch off this mast cell response. Some of the major causes of mast cell activation syndrome are heavy metal toxicity, mold exposure, and chronic infections. So mast cell activation syndrome is a very serious condition that will require medical treatment. Number six, oxalates. Oxalates form sharp crystals that deposit in the joints, in the gut, in the bones, in the lungs, in the urethra, in the bladder, and even in the brain. They cause chronic inflammation and at the same time will release a lot of histamine. Number seven, candida. So candida is a yeast that stimulates mast cells and basophils to release histamine. It also contains oxalates. And as we know, oxalates are a major cause of inflammation and histamine release. And candida can also cause leaky gut, which is another cause of high histamine. Number eight, inflammatory bowel disease. So as the name suggests, Inflammatory bowel disease causes a lot of inflammation in the gut. It includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Now, research has shown that those with both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis have less Dow enzyme activity in the gut than healthy individuals. It's the Dow enzyme that breaks down histamine. So this is how people with irritable bowel disease can have issues long-term with histamine intolerance. Number nine is foods. So we can classify foods that are going to impact histamine in your body into four different types. First of all, there are foods that contain histamine as part of their maturation process. 
Secondly, there are foods that contain other biogenic amines. So histamine is a biogenic amine, but there are other biogenic amines and these foods will be broken down by the Dow enzyme before histamine foods. There are also foods that liberate histamine in the body by stimulating mast cells, and there are also foods that reduce Dow enzyme activity. Now, I do list all of these different foods in my book if you would like to have further information on this. Number 10 is estrogen. So estrogen simulates mast cells to release histamine, and it also downregulates the Dow enzyme. Now, at the same time, when your histamine is high, it will stimulate the ovaries to produce more estrogen. So you can see the link between histamine and estrogen is a really vicious cycle. Number 11, methylation issues. So methylation is a biochemical process in the body that provides our body with methyl groups. And these methyl groups are needed for the proper functioning of many enzymes and a few of which will really impact histamine. So one of them is the histamine and methyltransferase enzyme. It requires a methyl group to work, and this breaks down histamine. And we also have another enzyme called the COMPT enzyme, the catechol methyltransferase enzyme. This needs a methyl group to work, and the COMPT enzyme breaks down estrogen. And remember, if we're not breaking down our estrogen, it's going to increase histamine. Number 12, genetic mutations. So there are several genetic mutations that can impact your ability to break down histamine. So one is the MTHFR enzyme. So what can happen is if you have an MTHFR gene mutation and a reduction of the functioning of that enzyme, you potentially have issues with making methyl groups and you need these methyl groups for methylation to break down histamine. Now, secondly, you can have a genetic mutation on the Dow enzyme. So you might not be able to be breaking down histamine effectively via the Dow enzyme. You can also have a genetic mutation on histamine and methyltransferase enzyme. Now, this is the enzyme that requires the methyl group and it breaks histamine down, particularly in the central nervous system, so the brain. And you can also have a genetic mutation on the COMPT enzyme that breaks down estrogen. And we, we know that estrogen can really increase histamine. Number 13 is medications. So there are many drugs that can increase histamine. They do this by stimulating the release of histamine in the body or reducing Dow enzyme activity. And they do include common medications such as Nexium and Zyrtec and Gaviscon, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, as well as metformin. Mm -hmm.